work with. It's called The Library Book by oh. Susan Orlean. I, this, I hold it up, it's backwards, right? Isn't it something, is it backwards? Ah, no, correct. okay, well, that, that's it. And there should be copies available because it's been out for a while, but it's a, it's a um, nonfiction story about, uh, well, based on, um, there was a fire, I think it was in- Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Yes, Los Angeles Library, yeah. Um, in uh, 1986, April 1986. And it, uh, it burned more than seven hours. It's the largest library fire in the history of the United States. It destroyed 4,000 books and damaged 700 thousand more and um, shut down the library for seven years. The mystery remains. So anyway, this is the story about the fire and about the his more information about libraries. And stuff. So I think it should be kind of interesting. It's, it was well received and we'll have to find out about it. And see. It was on chapter a day very recently. The last yeah. book they done on chapter a day. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Did you listen to it? Well, see, I listen to the radio at night when I go to sleep. Okay. So but I don't, I don't always catch it. But I, you know, I was in and out enough to, 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 you know, to get the whole scoop. So I've got, I have the book and I'm going to just kind of speed read it to fill in blanks. Sure. Mm -hmm. I, I read it about, I read yeah. it about a year ago and I thought it was fascinating and gave me a whole new respect for the power of libraries. I really, really enjoyed it very much. Okay, great. Well, then we will look forward to the discussion yeah. for next month. Yeah, great. Yeah. So um, I've read parts of it. I haven't, you know, finished the whole thing, but I think I, I see Anne and I see Beth. Mm -hmm. So this is so neat to have them all on the same page. Last time I kept scrolling it back and forth and it wasn't, wasn't working well. Okay, um, we should probably get started with this, this month's book, which is Such a Fun Age by uh, Kylie Reed, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so I thought it was pretty fascinating and I uh, thank you, uh, Morgan, for sending out those other information about it because I watched the, there was a YouTube um, um, interview. Um, well, no, it was, yeah, it was just talking. But it was an interview with the author, and then I saw her do a little speech at a, a book um, program too. So um, I, think, I think I missed that. What, was this um, about, about the author? Yeah, yeah. There was an email. Was it yesterday? I think Morgan. Mm -hmm. I sent out an email yesterday, and then um, I also posted it on the Facebook page. A couple of um, interviews, podcasts where the author was interviewed. One was by the BBC uh, Radio 4, and there was also another interview from earlier in the year um, by Zibby Owens, who writes Thank for you. the New York Times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were, they were, it's always interesting to hear a different perspective and somebody else asking questions and see the author actually speaking. We love Ruth, okay. <laughs> Okay, so have did everybody read the book, Such a Fun Age? Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe we'll just go go through and tell tell me how how you liked it. We'll start with Beth, huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I liked it fine. You know, I thought it brought up some issues that are in the forefront right now with the uh, Black Lives Matter, you know, about um, white uh, privilege. Uh, you know, some people don't like hearing certain phrases, you know, but I mean, it pointed out how she was treated differently. Um, and um, so, I, you know, I thought sh she was bringing up that issue about some inequalities. And um, at one point I thought, you know, it was a little too much with the girlfriends and all that, but um, I liked it fine. <laughs> oh, good, good. Anne, how about you? I listened to it on audio 
Um, mm -hmm. I just finished it a couple hours ago. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was good. I thought it got a little too chit chatty at, at like in the middle of the book. Um, for me, it was just like, okay, move, move along with the story, <laughs> with the plot. Um, but, um, obviously it's all very relevant right now, um, with race relations and everything. Um, Good. I gave it three stars. Three stars. Okay. I don't know. I wasn't, I, it was okay, but it wasn't like super fabulous. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Ruth, let's hear your take. Um, I liked it. I had, uh, I wish I had heard it on audio because when the black women were talking the way she, you know, she wrote it, the way they were speaking it, you know, it was, I'm stumbling over that. Huh? And, but it, it opened, I mean, their manner of speaking, their style of speaking, it wasn't just the words, I'm going to, or to I'm a gonna, you know, it was just the way they, they talked to each other. That was kind of an, a, a wonderful eye opener for me i loved I, I don't know how much you want me to say so i i, I don't <laughs> i think i would have given it a, a a four three plus four for the whole thing if that's all you want me to say i can stop there and say whatever that's, that's good <laughs> yeah just a short and then we'll go go into yeah. it but what about you did you like the book Who, me yes oh i did i i really really like dialogue um, I spent several years out in Washington, D.C. and taught at a black school, and I could really identify with the dialogue. I, it, was, it was wonderful. Uh -huh. And you have to listen. You know, I, I, my ears aren't tuned to that, but um, I could just hear them talking. And it's awful to say them and us, but I don't know how else to, to say it. Did you listen to... Did you listen to the book or did you read it? I read it, but I, okay. I could hear it. Could hear. Could, yeah. And um, so I taught in an all black school, so I could just hear the, I could hear the children talking too. And you know, I could just, it was just so. It's interesting. Yeah. 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 And, they, and they, like they would, at the school, the little kids would always say, we was this and we was that. And it was almost to the point where I heard it enough where I almost said it a few times. Sure. <laughs> it's, it's very addicting. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay, Chandra, how about you? What's your take on the book? My take on the book, um, I think it was, like everybody said, it's very appropriate timing um, with Black Lives Matter. Um, I read the book. I didn't listen to the book. And I would find it very, uh, I, I would like to listen to it, even though I've read it now, too, because I would like to hear... <laughs> The yeah. voices in there would be great. Um, I would, I, I feel pretty similar to Anne on this too. I think I would say three stars, three and a half on it. That mm -hmm. I was waiting for a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Sounds but, good. Okay. It's a quick read. Good. Vicki. <laughs> um, I, I am very glad I read it. That's usually my... Um, dividing line. Did I, did I feel it was a waste of time or are you glad you read it? And I, I'm glad I read it. I have just finally read The Help. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. And so this, this was kind of a more modern um, look at right. that kind of situation that uh, meant many uh, minority people find themselves in. True. I'm glad That's I read it. Great. Morgan, you you recommended it, so we thank you for that. <laughs> Do you have any other comments right now? Um, I liked it just because um, I find the books that go back and forth between two different um, storylines can sometimes be hard to follow. And I mm -hmm. found some of the um, some of the characteristics of um, Alex or Alex, however she wanted to be called. Whichever way. <laughs> yeah. Her 
friends. I could see I could see some similarities in um, our culture per se, but I found a lot of the uh, characters to be kind of pushed almost to the caricature level or pushed to the furthest. Um, I liked the juxtaposition of the two cultures really who coincided in the same location. So, um, and I, I agree, I, I feel like it's one of those topics that um, even people who read books or have friends from different cultures and that sort of thing feel like they are, that they understand it. There's still something to be said that unless you're in it constantly, you, you really can't understand everything. So, yeah, unless you're in those situations, you don't know how the other people are dealing with yeah, or yeah. the phone. Right. I, I think it's, it, go, go ahead, Ruth. I was just going to say, I think it's interesting, and I would be tending to say the same thing. It, it's such an appropriate time to read this. And then I think that's a shame on us mm. that it's taken all this to get us. The, the, you know, to get the consciousness where it should have been, should have been for years and years and years. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, it takes something like that to open our eyes sometimes. I've, I've got a little bit of information about the author. Um, it How says, about you? How about oh, you, Nancy? <laughs> oh, yeah, well, no, I liked it. I thought it was interesting, and I'm um, thinking... Um, well, just because of the co color of her skin, how they automatically assumed that she was in the wrong, you know, or that she was doing something wrong. And when I read more about the author too, or maybe it was from the, one of the interviews too, she said there, those things happen. So she had recently experienced a few things like that when she was writing the book or before. And, you know, just because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time, and their color, their skin color was different, these, they were accused and, you know, thought that they were doing something wrong when, when they really weren't. And I thought, we don't realize sometimes how different that would be to grow up like that and be concerned with that. Um, she said when she was writing the book, um, she said it, she thought of a, a, a comedy of good intentions. When somebody asked her, what did you have? you know, themes and stuff. And she said, well, I don't, I don't want to, I don't start out with a theme. I want to tell a good story and I want the people to enjoy reading it. And that's, that's her primary. She said, I wasn't thinking of themes or anything. I was just thinking of the story, but then the themes came in. And she said, eventually she thought of it as a comedy of good intentions. And she had done, she based a lot of it on her experiences as babysitting. She used to do a lot of babysitting or nanny work when she was in New York. And so some of it was on her experiences. And uh, she just recently, when she published this book, she wrote, she worked on it at, at um, the Iowa uh, Writer's School. And um, she, she said um, she, um, and recently finished her, her master's there, her, whatever that was. And um, she just um, said that was, she had the idea and she would, she had started the novel in 2015 as she was applying to graduate school, but she didn't get in the first time she applied. And finally she reapplied and um, she finished it while she's working on her master's of fine arts at the University of Iowa. And so she, um, she thought the instances of racial biases that don't end in violence as a way of highlighting the moments that we don't see on the news but still exist every day. Um, they was partly inspired by the years she spent working as a babysitter too. And, and she said, um, I, it was interesting to listen to her talk about things like that. And, but my, my character in the story was well, Emira, of course, was interesting. All the characters, the main characters were really, un, you know, they all worked together. I guess maybe my favorite one was, was the little girl. <laughs> she, she, the, she was so um, um, outspoken or she just didn't quite have it together all the time. And, and I thought the relationships between the sitter and the little girl were, were really, really Absolutely. interesting. 
great. Yeah. They, they were fabulous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. A gold star for that in interaction with her. I just loved it. Yeah. It's surprising sometimes though how little Amira said to the little girl, to, to Briar. It seemed like sometimes she just answered a really short and didn't give some long explanation like I might have done as a mom. Um, right. And I think also the the white women in the book were not Midwesterners. I mean, they certainly had a different culture than, than we have here. I don't think many of us had nannies for our kids. At least I know I didn't. <laughs> I was lucky to get a babysitter once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> lucky to have a husband home to help. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what did you think of the mother and Briar's relationship? Pretty sad. I thought it was okay until that second baby came. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. It seemed like, yeah. And Briar could see that. You know? Oh, yeah. Okay. And in one instance when the, um, uh, I don't know, or was that when Amira was leaving or something and she said to um, Alex or Alex, Alex, whatever, uh, that she, she said, you should try being a mother to her, you know, and uh, it made, I wonder if, uh, you know, if you were Alex, how you would have felt about that. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> but she wasn't a very good mother to her. She ignored her and she didn't pick up on her feelings and, and she yeah. certainly liked the baby, the cute little baby much better. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, I think Briar didn't have that sweetness that the mom was hoping she would have in her child. Right. Well, I think, and mom, I think you know, more Alix, than sweetness. <laughs> Alix was very self-centered. I mean, a, as huh. were most of her friends. <laughs> I mean, it's that's kind of the culture. <laughs> yeah, so she didn't really, but she took that, the new baby with her everywhere she went, but little little Briar just got left home although I think um I think Amira was really good for her I was really and they oh, had such a close connection I was sad when when they when she left you know mm -hmm. well um and little Briar was um aware you know that Catherine was the favorite. <laughs> Remember yes. that little talk that uh, yes. that she had explaining that um, yeah. it's a family and no favorites, but she was aware of it. Well, and then I thought the author was making the point at the end that it was um, the same because she was paying attention to Catherine and Briar was asking for help to get that pumpkin down and had to ask somebody else. Oh, the pumpkin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but she did ask somebody else. So that was a, that was a good thing. Yeah. She, well, was, she, she was making more of a point, too, that she wondered how Briar would grow up to be independent or, or be like her mother, you know, and hire people that take care of the children and things. <laughs> Which, you know, to, to be honest, that's a fact of life for many people today. Mm -hmm. They have to hire people to help with their child care, you know. So you, I think some of us are coming from it. So that was a rare exception. I think it's far more unexceptional today. Mm -hmm. Yes. And have help caring for children while you perhaps go to work, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but instead of nannies, it's like preschools and daycare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and yet, yeah, and some do have nannies, yeah, too. I don't know. I, I don't yes, know. I know there are some, but it's very common to have your children in daycare. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's something if you wait six months, you know, most times it's just your maternity leave six weeks and and they go to daycare <laughs> barb did you have a comment you wanted to say i i think even briar's name is kind of telling you know when you think of briar the, the, the thorns and the you know it seems like that kind of describes how her mom thought about her is that she just was a little just not a little, sweet a little <laughs> a little sticky and a little you know just 
A little prickly. Yeah. Talked prickly. a lot. Talked a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, she, and loud. She was very loud, too. I yeah. Thought she, I thought she was really cute. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, she was the best. I think um, it's interesting con contrasting the help and this book. Oh, yeah. In that, in the help, the babysitter figure was usually also cleaning the house and doing the laundry mm -hmm. and all of that stuff, as well as taking care of the child. But <clears throat> the main gal in there said that she knew at a certain age that these children would be turned against Black people. Mm -hmm. And so she was constantly trying to say to her charges, you're beautiful, everybody's beautiful, um, the world is bigger than just black and white, and um, yet all the while knowing that by the time this child went to school or got a couple grades further into school, that they would reject their feelings about black people. And if they'd invite them to the wedding, <clears throat> a wedding, um, they'd have to wear their uniforms, for example. Again, there's the theme of the uniforms that right. was expected. Yeah. Well, that's interesting to have read both of those books close and then yeah. you kind of compare <laughs> that. It's been a while since I did the help. But the uniform was another thing. Was, was um, Alex really trying to get her to wear a uniform or was you know, did she do that intentionally? And why did she keep wearing that shirt? <laughs> I don't know. It seemed like it was just expected of her. That was just part of the, the way things were. And uh -huh. maybe she didn't want to mess up her own clothes either. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what she said at first. But then yeah. it kind of became, you know, more than a habit, I think. I, I, I think Alex really, but... I thought that was interesting. I hadn't really thought of it that much. You know, she always just came in and put it on. Like it right. was, I thought it was sort of a mutual thing, the advantage of it, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, she was taking care of her clothes, you know, not getting them messed up and everything. And the other woman probably liked it for the power level of it. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. But you know, didn't later in the book when uh, Amira was taking some job, she thought, oh, this will be good. It's a uniform. I don't have to think. Because she wasn't into clothing like all of her, her friends right. were. Right. I mean, I have felt that way. I, you know, if I don't have to think about, that's what, that's the best part about COVID. She wears the same thing every day. <laughs> I don't have to get dressed. <laughs> you know, she said that when she went to work for the Green Party, she could wear jeans. <laughs> Yes, that she didn't have to dress up, yeah. So. Did any of you think, both of these women, both Alex and Amira, seems to me they relied on a single friend to tell them exactly what to do and what to say. I mean, they, they both seem so capable to me of making their own decisions, but they... They, they, they were relying on other people to direct them so many times. I don't know, did anybody else feel that way? Yeah. Yeah, well, she was relying on Zara. Uh, uh, Amira would rely on Zara for her um, to say things that she wouldn't say herself, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, it, yeah, and the same with Alix. She would. Mm -hmm. Um, Tamara se seemed to be the person that she would lean on for that kind of stuff. It, it, and that's kind of outside of my, you know, outside of my experience again. You know, it's not like I don't talk to friends or discuss things, but to have people give me direction, you direction. know, that's such, such specific, I guess, direction. It seemed a little strange to me, but. Well, I think maybe that was to illustrate how both characters were lost. They hadn't, fo hadn't found themselves, you know, Amira, you. Amira, obviously, because she didn't know what she was going to do with her life. 
-hmm. but Alix also because she moved to Philadelphia and she didn't know what her identity was in this community now being a mom thank you yeah I like that mm -hmm. yeah that's that's true what did you think about um um Kelly, Kelly. the boy the the fella <laughs> who, who 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 had connections with both of those ladies I thought that was um unusual to say the least. I liked him fine. I thought he was a good character. <laughs> he was good. But then when he showed up at Thanksgiving, at that Thanksgiving dinner, how did, what was Alex's response to that? She was. Oh, well, she was horrified, yeah. <laughs> they were both, the both shocked. <laughs> Overwhelmed, I think. Yeah, yeah. She, uh, I don't know. I, I, um, I liked him at first. Well, then he took that, he took that video and, um, but, uh, you know, of the incident at the, at the grocery store, but, uh, he was, uh, I wasn't quite sure why Alex kept thinking, kept telling, um, Amira that, um, Kelly was a bad person or prejudiced. And then Kelly kept telling Amira that Alex was a bad person and prejudice too. And what was that? They all? were both right. I think they both had good insights into each other. And I, it took me a while to come to, come to that because I kept thinking, well, one of them's got to be right and the other one's got to be wrong, right? They uh -huh. can't both be right about each other, but I think they kind of were in some ways. <laughs> I feel you like know. it was blurred intentions, you know, yeah. like you, yeah. like, like I said, you think you know things and you think you're trying to do the right thing, but you're coming from a completely different life circumstance and experience level. And then your intentions are not necessarily completely towards the other person for their absolute best interest. Your, your best interest is still in there. So. All right. And that was, that was obvious with Kelly being that, you know, he always dated black women. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, it was like. Um, Why did he do that? It wasn't Why? completely normal. I mean, you know, you just, um, he was like making a point of that. I thought to maybe overcompensate that he wasn't prejudiced. I don't know, but it was, yeah. I mean, that was um, off. <laughs> And he had black friends in high school too that he yeah. hung around with and admired. Sure. And, and they were male friends. Yeah. I think Alex said he did that to make himself feel better, you know, because, oh, look, I'm friends with these black people and, and yeah. so I'm a better person. But uh, I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not sure that was his real, you know, the reason he was doing it. Maybe he was just attracted to them or. Well, they were better athletes. He wanted to hang around with the better guys, right? Yeah. yeah, I could see that in high school, but then all his girlfriends and even the one when um, Amira saw him later, he was mm -hmm. with a black woman, which is fine, uh -huh. except when it, there's so many of the other race, you just wonder what is his, what is his thinking about it? <laughs> Yeah, but you know, I, I thought the, re well, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but the relationship between Kelly and Amira started out fine to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even yeah. the video that he, he took the video, right? Correct me. Right. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I think he could have had her best interest there. Yes, he, he did. Just like, you know, the, that would the, you see the videos now. He did destroy it at her request, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And and if it weren't for her misunderstanding or mis being misled by who let that video out, that relationship might have kept going, I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah I would have thought that too, because I thought they were, you know, compatible and, and, and having finding interesting things with each other, but um he, I feel um, like he was pushing her though too because she was she was in a spot in her life where she didn't know what she wanted to do with her life and both Alex and Kelly 
had different ideas of what they thought she should do with her life instead of letting her make her own choices. That's true. Yeah. Kelly didn't want her to stay in babysit at all. No, no. Well, especially no. at that house. And no. she loved Briar and she loved yeah. doing that, you know. Right. Uh -huh. right. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody she certainly that? was she certainly was a, a a good role model for Briar. She certainly was a nurturing person for Bar Briar. I think uh -huh. you know she, she took care of her and Briar loved her and there was just a relationship there that kids thrive on. Yeah. The, she didn't have that with her own mom. So no. I I felt sorry for Briar when she left too. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I did too. That was really that was really kind of sad. Yeah. I and I when, when she and Kelly broke up too with the you know because of that video thing and and um did did Amira ever oh yeah she did figure out what happened who really yeah. leaked the video didn't she yeah. yeah ultimately well she over her friend Zara her, overheard that's um, right Alex talking to her friend and um I thought with the babysitting thing the author was making a point too that people shouldn't judge like some jobs are less than others, you know, the, mm -hmm. that there is a worth in what you do because, you know, people like Kelly was putting down a job babysitting. Well, she liked it. And I mean, that there, there's, uh, there's nothing wrong with babysitting, you know, or being a nanny. Everyone has what they like doing and enjoying. And so I thought she was making a point too about, you know, some prejudice against low, what some people might think are lower paying jobs mm -hmm. or not as much um, prestige. Yeah. You know, like we now appreciate all these workers in supermarkets and, um, you know, the garbage men and the people that still were serving in in this pandemic. <laughs> That's true. I think part of the issue that Kelly had with the babysitting was that she wasn't really um, being paid like she should have. I mean, she didn't have her, her yeah. health benefits and stuff. It wasn't a full-time job. And I think at one point, even Alex or offered her more, but it didn't have benefits for it maybe that came later. And um, I think that was his concern that it wasn't, you know, a real job because she didn't have the benefits. Yeah, and, and she needed that because she was going to be 26 and wouldn't have any. Yeah. yeah. And she was in a stuck place too, Amara. She, she didn't know which way to go. And I, I think she ended up with another job, but was that really the one she wanted? I think so. Uh, only, uh, maybe, the, uh, I'm thinking, I thought it was interesting that she got her administrative assistant job by helping out the son of the administrator. Oh. <laughs> remember that? I mean, I can't remember what the little guy said or what he needed, but she was okay. there. Yeah. And then That's she got the offer to be the yeah. administrator. Yeah. All these things kind of dovetail into one another. <laughs> But I still think, what about when all the, the, the girlfriends of Al Alex were in, all ended up in, the, in that storage room at, at the dining, at the Thanksgiving dinner thing? What did you think about all of them hovering in that closet? The author said she, she liked close spaces. She liked to put people together like that in small little spots. She said she liked to put them in bathrooms too, where there wasn't much space and they had to confront one another. <laughs> but, yeah, the awkwardness, uh, yeah. Awkwardness, yeah, maybe that's it. That was it. <laughs> but uh, I felt like they I were very just, judgmental. Very. All, of the, all yeah. of the friends on both sides were very judgmental. This is true. Yeah, hmm. I don't know. But uh, I don't, I, I, I still can't get over the, the that he had dated um, both of the girls and that he caught oh and Alex too she thought that he had ruined her high school year her senior year 
but was that really true? Did something happen at the end where it changed her? What was that? Yeah, well, she, at the end, it was with those letters that she had been yeah. putting in Kelly's locker, and then she realized that the guy, yeah. Robbie's yeah. locker, was right underneath his. And did Kelly ever get those letters or not? No. 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 Okay. No. But so, the thing of it was, she realized it when she was still in high school and and just let that. That's right. You know, she just let that anger continue. And uh, I don't know. Well, and you know, Alex I, thought, I thought that was really terrible of her, you know, mm -hmm. that she did find out that he was right. He had never gotten the letter. And yet she just never said anything to him. But I think Alex really liked Kelly. Probably pictured herself with him, it, it, you know. Right, she still had, she, it seemed like she still, yeah, she, she still had feelings for him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I think the same could be said about um, Amir, Amira. She, mm -hmm. she broke up with him because she thought he leaked the video. And then right. she found out that he didn't, but she still stayed away from him and still yeah. stayed mad at him, just like Alix mm -hmm. stayed yeah. away from him and stayed mad at him. Well, why was that? Why did they do that? It, I, I, I've got it here. Okay. It's like, you know, she's already discovered now by cleaning the lockers. Yes. And um, she says it would never, never be a relief to know that a locker map malfunction was to blame for her demise rather than Kelly Copeland himself. Believing that Kelly was the starting point of her adversity would always be easier than believing she'd simply slip through an unlucky crack. This <laughs> choice to believe otherwise, to pretend there weren't coffee colored letters pressed into her chest, this is after she cleaned them, and she took it, out, yeah. would keep her close to him, even if staying close to Kelly meant holding a grudge for something he never did. So <laughs> uh, Kelly was the guy who ruined her senior year much in the way that her name was spelled Alex. I mean, you knew that when, I mean, when she, he, Kelly was reintroduced to Alex, she still, her, wow. you know, all a Twitter. I mean, she yeah. was taken with him. And she, she was, was really, taken. so she, he was the one that uh, ruined everything. <laughs> and just be mad at a situation, she wanted him, you know. Yeah, she weird. still hated him, even though she shouldn't yeah. have. Yeah. I, uh, or carried that grudge. Yeah. And I felt bad that um, Kelly and, and um, Amira didn't get back together again either. Well, didn't she? He again, could. I think the author did a really good job of putting, obviously showing the differences between the cultures, Yeah, th putting very small and continual hints throughout the book how Alix and Amira were similar. And, and situational life life situations, mm -hmm. um, even though they had these other you know di totally different you know kind of friend cultures. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't well, know. They, <laughs> they they both were young as far as knowing themselves. Do and I mean, uh, Amira just didn't know what she wanted to do with her life and she liked yeah. what she was doing and and then um Alix couldn't get her pocket. She just wasn't there. You know, so <laughs> uh oh <laughs> a comment there? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. yeah. I would have I would like to have seen a, well maybe I guess it was a happy ending, but then they you know, I, I still like Kelly and, and, and Amira together. I thought that would have been good. I will <laughs> say that I think that uh, part of the reason I didn't like this book as much is because of all the swearing. Um, oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't find it necessary. <laughs> and because I listened to the book, it was very like oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was very present. Yeah. Uh, but and then, and 
And then I wondered, because it was mostly on Amira and her friends, was it not? Yeah, I think so. And I wondered, okay, is that the culture that I'm not yes. exposed to? Not that we don't hear those same words, you know, among white people. And I hate it then. But it was so over the top, you know, and I thought, well, you know, maybe that's like, darn it. Yeah. You know. It's hard to wrap right. my head around. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid that uh, conversations nowadays are like, filled I with like that, that we just don't, didn't grow up using. <laughs> so I think young people, you hear that with young people, you know, in passing and-, and It's supposedly for, cool. Oh, is that it? It's cool? Oh, oh yeah, it's, 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 it's yeah, cool, it's, it's colloquial to swear. Yeah. They, yeah. Then you're in with the in crowd. Yeah, but everybody I think it would not be genuine. I think it would not be genuine uh, to the the women, the young women, in that circumstance, in that um, age, and in that area, to have any other kind of conversation. I think we're being a little naive about yeah. Yeah. the kind of language that is the norm for a lot of people, especially mm -hmm. younger people. I'm not naive yeah. about it, and I that's just don't just, like it. <laughs> well, no. you, don't have to, you don't have to like it, and, and I wouldn't want it in my home, but if I went to their home, I would expect that's what I would hear, um, hmm. unless they didn't use it out of respect for me for some reason, but I think it is the norm. Um, much more than we understand. I think maybe, 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 but I also think it's a little like what, what Morgan was saying, overcharacterization in some parts of it. Yeah. I maybe stood in line. Maybe in I've, young people, there's more of that, maybe, but I don't think you can lump it like by any certain group. You know, it's just a mixture. I mean, all different races and ages. I think it sort of depends on their background or how, you know, what their experiences were, if they were in the service maybe. But anyway, if you, I didn't notice this as much, I think, because I had just read another book for the Bailey's Harbor uh, reading, the book discussion and talk about language. I mean, I almost stopped reading it. It's called Furiously Happy. Huh. And the language is, is bad. And uh, it's how the woman actually talks. You know, <laughs> it's an um, it's, uh, actual woman writing this. I mean, it's not fiction. And um, well, now that I think about it, is this fiction? No, I don't think you'd say it was fiction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, God. I'm just thinking, um, I grew up with a, 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 from junior high on, and she's a, she's a best friend yet. And her family came from Indiana. I don't think that necessarily had anything to do but if you'll excuse me, goddamn and shit and hell anyhow, from mother and father was just interspersed throughout the whole conversation. And you know, I'm sitting there reeling. And even my mother and dad, who we all became very good friends and they were wonderful, wonderful people. That was a manner of speaking for them, hmm. which I, you know, I, you, you just turn to accept it, it, it uh, not that I did it, accept it, but you hear it so much and you're kind of immune. And especially uh, since, since yeah. you know these people to be really fine in, other, in any other way, but their manner of speaking. That's yeah. how this woman is that we're all furiously happy. She has a mental illness and she has helped people just be out with it more with her. This is, I think, her second book. And um, she has what she called a folder of 24. And there's been more that have told her verbally. They, 
that she stopped them from committing suicide. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I guess like you'd say, this is just how she speaks. The F word is a lot. And um, the other one bothered me more. It's ass, but she puts the other part on, which <laughs> you know, one of the um, videos that Morgan sent started talking about code switching. I didn't get to, to listen to all of it, but now I don't think Amira used that language with Briar. No, no. Oh, no. So she, she knew when she could use it and when she couldn't. That, that's what I'm saying. I think you learn at a young age what you can and cannot say. Yeah. as a child and you kind of bring it through your lifespan mm -hmm. except that i think someone referred to younger people using this i think there's a, a stage through many teenagers young adults that pick up these quote cool words mm -hmm. that they're happy to leave behind once they become more adult or more mature yeah. But it might be a part of a peer pressure thing, you know, this is doing it, you're kind of in if you talk that way. I don't know. Yeah. Um, be, be I, I think that would be the hopeful thing. Yeah. The hopeful thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one thing I find when I'm reading uh, language like that, I, it just glosses through. I mean, I'm not picking up on it, you know, so it's not as shocking to me. When, when I'm reading it, I think when I would listen to it, it would be, you know, more obvious, of course, yeah. But, uh. Yeah, I listened to the book as well, but um, I kind of knew what the, what its premise was, and I knew there would be some code switching, but it also reminds me of, like, this isn't the first book to do this. Huckleberry Finn, I remember oh. in school, was very difficult <laughs> for me to understand in, in junior high, and I remember asking English teacher and my history teacher, I'm like, I don't understand what this is. And they had to basically explain that different cultures have different language, even within mm -hmm. our geographic region of the United States. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I, you know, this isn't the first book to sit there and show the code switching and that language has to be changed depending on whom you speak to and mm -hmm. what's expected of you. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's a good yeah. So yeah. We... there are times when I was younger, maybe when I read um, Tom Sawyer, I would have to read it out loud because I I couldn't read it. I'd have to hear it kind of in mm -hmm. order to and understand. Yeah. yeah, I particularly it... remember "shut the dough." You know, that was <laughs> I had to say it out loud too because I'd be like, I don't understand yeah. what "shut the dough" is. And the, and I remember <laughs> my history teacher he had I had study hall with him, and he's like, "Say it out loud fast," and I'm like, yeah. "Oh, they mean shut the door." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that it's is what you grow up with. It's what you hear in language right. in different uh -huh. places. And if you don't hear that stuff, you don't understand it. It's another yeah. language in a way. So, mm -hmm. Or is it a uh, root beer or a root beer? Is it hot fudge sundae or sunday? <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, it's different I places. I had the most trouble on a vacation in Kentucky one year. <laughs> It was so hard to understand. <laughs> you know, the, yeah. that, that. Sometimes, yes. well, I have trouble watching on television if it's an English, mm -hmm. you know, right. dialect. I can't quite figure out what they're saying for a while until you kind of mm -hmm. tune in to it better. Yeah. We were on a, a tour and I asked what that big white ranch was with all the red trim and everything. and. After I asked the bus driver twice, I didn't want to ask again. It turned out it was Calumet Farms. <laughs> I could oh. not understand it. <laughs> it wasn't that right. The dialect. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it. Okay. So, true. so if you <clears throat> were one word to describe this book, what would you what would you say? What would be mm. your word? Mm. Hmm. Who wants to go first? <laughs> Um, I'll go first. Uncomfortable. Comfortable. Uncomfortable. Right. Uncomfortable. Okay. Okay. There you go. That's, that's um, I'll, I'll say enlightening, but you know, usually you think like this is historically a way, you know, but it's, it's, it's that awareness enlightening kind of thing. Learned a little bit more. 
and I'm, I'm pleased that I read it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Any other comments about that? I think the I, first word that came into my head was charged. And why do you say that? I don't know. I just, it, like, it just felt like from every side, everybody was very charged or energized or something, or very, mm, I, don't, I don't know what the right word is, about their point of view on, on life and how it should be, you know? I like that. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. Or even box, boxed in. Everybody had their own little boxes to, to be That's, in. They were in different places. I, what I didn't understand was, I didn't get the, I mean, there's probably some explanation out there. The title of the book didn't seem to fit the book. Such a fun age. Yeah. Who, whose age were they talking about? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get, was nobody was in that fun. Yeah. Yeah. Our, were, they, uh, were they using age to mean a time of life? Or I mean, a time in our yeah, in right. everybody's lives? Like, I think maybe that's it. Yeah. Maybe I I thought that way too, Anne. Where and and that's actually one of the questions that I saw in looking at this book is, would you give the book that title? I was picking it up actually summertime read, and I thought, oh, this will be fun. It's on a couple book lists. The cover's got hot pink, yay! You know, and and I got into it, and I was like, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a weird name for the book, and I was kept thinking somebody's going to quote that some one of the characters is going to oh. quote it in the book or something and that's where she gets it from but I always find it. I don't like it when books do that you know wrap it up in the last chapter with one quote oh, and that's where it came from but I felt like I feel like it was maybe both of them were supposedly in an a time of life that's supposed to be so fun that everyone tells you oh your 20s is so fun oh when you have your first family it's so fun and then you're in the middle of it and you're like what because this is not. I was sold yeah. here. I, I think it could apply to all three ages presented that the toddler mm -hmm. and, and Myra and her mother. I mean, all three of them are in this maybe idyllic time, but each one is struggling within it. And what I was thinking about words is transitional. It seemed like the major characters in the book were all trying to transition. Even the the little one um, was transitioning from, you know, soon she'd be transitioning to preschool and school and so forth. And mm -hmm. so it really, I don't think transitional times are necessarily fun ages. <laughs> so maybe it was a little tongue in cheek about that. I don't know. Sarcasm, yeah. 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 Nobody asked the author about that in any of the interviews. That would have been a good question. We should email her and find out. <laughs> <laughs> well, figure I, that out. I really, I really yeah. liked Amira's gift of a goldfish. I thought that was interesting where oh. she got all, all these other gifts, you know, these fancy things, but she liked the goldfish. Yeah. And then when and she replaced the goldfish yeah. and, and, and it wasn't the same one. And, uh, and what did Briar say about the fish? Polka dots, was it? I don't know. It had polka chicken pox or something. Chicken yeah. Pox. yeah, chicken pox. <laughs> My fish is chicken pox. <laughs> she she kind of thought there was something amiss there. Yeah, oh. and, and did I miss something? Amira was very upset that she needed to replace this fish. Oh, I, I know they were to go to a party and that was X'd out because of it. Or was she mad at Alice because she couldn't tell the child the truth? Yeah. She didn't I don't know why she, she was so want, upset. She didn't want the briar to be upset about a certain was what was happening though. I can't, well, can't they remember. They had been practicing a dance. Well, it them. made her miss her ballet uh Halloween party. You know yeah, <laughs> should have been able to tell her the truth and not have her miss oh, something I, that she was looking forward to so much just so that she wouldn't have to deal with her sad ex explanation of what happened or something. Yeah, I think she was having, um, Alex had invited the, um, yep. the worker with her husband over 
with her children or something. They were to have a get together so she could show that she was trying to be friendly with his work per person. And um, she didn't want Briar to be all upset, uh, you know, or be out of sorts when the other, because the girl was bringing other, her children too. So I think there was some event happening and she just didn't want Briar to be out of sorts, but. but well, I well, think it, I think she was making the point was Alex was taught thinking of herself again. Yes. Yeah. And, and not her daughter. <laughs> yeah. Not wanting to deal with the emotions of, of Briar. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. One thing that horrified me was when Alex w went off and left her baby in the apartment. Oh my gosh. Uh, that was bad. Uh, yeah. And yeah, it that? sort of. I didn't even know how that happened. <laughs> I reread that. I kept thinking, I'm like, what? Yeah. yeah. When is she going to realize that she's left this baby yeah. at home alone? And it kind of, I, I never liked her. And boy, when that happened, it was like, oh my gosh, you know, she is just less likable in my eyes now. What was she doing? Why did she? She leave went her? off to meet Kelly. Oh. Yeah. She had figured out his routine as, oh, at, at, you know, at work. Yeah. The child was sleeping and she snuck out. Yeah, thinking, oh, I'll be gone for 10 minutes or whatever, and yeah. Two hours, mm. yeah, two hours that, later. That was very strange, yeah. 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 Mm. Surprised they didn't make a little more of that, but maybe they just, you, you didn't. <laughs> but the yeah. point was made. <laughs> it was made. Another, yeah, another example of just being self-centered. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is true. This is true. Well, do you think... I I wish think, I would we would have seen more of her husband, you know. Yeah. Peter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He seemed like a good guy. <laughs> I don't know if he was that much of a part of her life. You know, she was so wrapped up in herself. She didn't really need him other than to give her a roof over her head and food to eat and clothes. And, he, was, he was older, I think, too. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. He was that. kind of a, yeah, he was just kind of. Just kind of there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So, well, any other exciting comments here? How about a movie? <laughs> we could make a movie out of it, huh? <laughs> that would be fun. That would be pretty good, I think. Mm -hmm. I think, I think so. be prior. <laughs> yeah. But, um, and I think the author did do a good job of showing the differences, you know, in the race and culture and, and um, made us stop and think maybe about, you know, how a young person is feeling when they haven't found their, their real job yet with their insurance and stuff. Because I think a lot of young people are in that situation. They're trying to find a job, but it's not always going to work out. <laughs> or but they can't go where they want to, or it's not working the way they think. But and probably, probably not as easy as we think, right? Mm -hmm. so, I don't remember when we just walked into things that seemed like <laughs> that was a long time ago. Though. <laughs> I know I felt it was difficult growing up getting insurance and finding jobs that have insurance. And especially now, a lot of jobs do not have insurance. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's extremely difficult to find your security blankets, I feel like. Yeah. I think that would be a hard time, a hard time, yeah. And not a fun age, right? Right. No. Yeah, right. Oh. That would be our research for next time. Somebody yeah. should put the author and find out why she named it that. <laughs> why she titled it that. Well, I've, I will start up a Facebook group. I spoke with a couple of you before we all started. Um, so we'll start a Facebook group that'll be a private group through the library's page and call it Readers okay. Rampant. And I'll send out um, an email so that you guys can all just click in and join. And then we can share articles or different stories that, that we find that relate to the books that we've read. And then, um, so I'll look and see if I can find if she's ever made comments on her okay. title. Okay, okay. That was great. All right. Yeah. Well, what what I, is the next book? Oh, you get you. The library. The library. Oh, oh the library okay. Book by Susan Orlean. It's uh, got a red cover usually. Nonfiction. Nonfiction. It's about the fire uh, San Francisco library that burned down in Los um, Angeles yeah Los Angeles library yeah when was it it was in um, 
1986, uh, there was a big fire out in the Los Angeles Public Library and destroyed it. And um, it's still kind of a mystery as to what happened. But I think the book has a lot to do with just libraries and it's, it'll be interesting to read about, it's also about that incident, but we'll find out. We can discuss that next time, okay? <laughs> it was interesting that not too long ago, I was reading uh, just a few days ago about libraries being one of our most respected institutions. And I think that book helps demonstrate how that happened. Okay. Um, because it really follows the history of libraries and why so many women were involved in running libraries and so forth. It was, it's really, really a good book. I highly recommend it. <laughs> well, that, well, that's good to know. And um, even our author today, she said she spent a lot of time in, in libraries because that was her quiet place where she could get some work done. So, mm -hmm. all right. Well, we will see you next time and we'll look for that Facebook page, okay? Thanks, Anne, Morgan. Thanks, Anne, Morgan. I have to ask you. Bye. Thank Anne, you. where are you? Where are you that you have sunshine? <laughs> no, it's a virtual background. Oh, oh. oh. we have that's I wondered me the whole time. Because my son my son is my son's got virtual school today and he doesn't want you to see him. See how my hand my hand disappears? Background. Oh, yeah. But it's been raining the whole book club and you're there sitting in this beautiful day with this is this is Northern Skies outdoor patio. Oh, <laughs> oh, you aren't actually no there. Wonder. So Anne. How yeah. do you change your background? How do you, you change you, your background? You know, when you look where it says start or stop video at the bottom? Oh, yeah. Or time. Um, and there's a little arrow. You click on the arrow and it says choose virtual background. Oh. Oh, OK. You can pick, oh, oh, like I, I, you can pick anything. I can pick outer space in back of hers, and it looked like she was floating around the planets. That was really kind <laughs> But I don't know how she did that either. <laughs> oh. Well, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.